Welcome to Popping Culture, episode 12. I'm Jay. I'm Adrian. Thanks for joining us again this week. Notice how we could say that quickly together, because that new lower third you swore I wasn't going to make? Yeah, no, you, you did make it. Very there good. You go. Very good. Do you know what I didn't do? What's that? Bring the Daredevil long box. Yeah, I... You didn't bring it last week either. I was waiting. The last week it was in my car. And I didn't was it really? Think, yeah, it really was. I wasn't going to say anything because, you know, obviously I'm the one that said I'll read it all in a week. Yep. But I was totally leaving up to you to bring it. Nope, that's totally on me. Like, I took it out of my car. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to put it back in and bring it. You know where you should have put it if it was already in your car? In the warehouse? Yeah. Yeah. In, no. our, in our recording studio in this nondescript warehouse? Nondescript warehouse. Very nondescript. There are three blue doors. Choose wisely if you ever come to this place. The other two will lead you to weird weird places yeah you're like seriously on the other side of that wash it's weird yeah i, I don't so funny story about before you pour the beer Ooh. funny story about doors so where i work i work in an office building not a warehouse um in the conference room that is just next to my desk uh there's a set of doors uh when you're in the office area you walk through a door into the conference room like a normal conference room, whatever on the back wall there's a set of double doors <laughs> That drops a story into the manufacturing area. What, seriously? Yeah. Oh, that's um, so weird. It's meant for uh, if we ever have to take um, like office furniture or machines, like we have a big copy or something like that, if we have to take it out, instead of having to carry it down the uh-huh. stairs, you throw a pallet up there, you put it on the pallet, you bring a forklift in, you, you lift it up. I feel like that architect was just like the biggest fan of Home Alone, and they're like, this is going to be great if they ever get trapped in the conference room. It was actually my, my dad that designed it. How does your dad feel about Home Alone? Uh, I don't know that he, he ever saw it. You know what? We'll, uh, I'll, I'll we'll drop it with them. Yeah, yeah, Give I'll us drop an that update. Yeah, yeah, no, drop uh, that off. But no, so anytime we have new people, like I just, we just hired another guy, a new guy two weeks ago. Um, I always say, you know, if there's ever a fire or anything like that, that's the escape door right there. <laughs> um, You'll survive it. I'm, I'm really waiting. Maybe one day I'll just get bored and start a fire and see what he does. So speaking of weird doors, have you ever noticed that there's two doors in my office? Yeah. One yeah, that yeah. leads in and then one that's behind the guest chairs. Yeah. I always assumed that was like your uh, your grow room or something. You would think it's not. It actually leads into the other weird warehouse next to us. Oh. So I actually have full access to their warehouse. They don't have access to ours. Nice. So one of these days, I kind of want to just fuck with them. And yeah, just yeah, be yeah. like, do and trounce on over. Just get a remote control car. With, like, a GoPro attached to it? I have one of those uh, helicopters that you can never control because the gyroscope's always oh, crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. on it. Yeah. Hey, yeah. I'll just send one of those in there. there. There you go. What's the worst that could happen? No, please. Yeah. It'll be fine. It probably won't be as bad as what we're about to drink. I, I don't know. I'm excited for this. <sighs> so we were at Special Rules earlier. Cause Shocking. We're semi-pro alcoholics. And, Speak uh, for yourself. I'm going for sponsorship. That's true. Yeah, yeah. If you are a brewery and you want to sponsor our show... Um, no, so we were looking at, they have their taps all listed on like a, a TV screen, so it's easy for them to update it, and we're looking through what we're going to drink this week, and I was like, why don't we try that one? It sounds interesting, and by interesting, I mean, most people say that sounds terrible, but... Even the bartender was like, mm. Yeah, he was like, yeah, no, it's it's good, you should try it. Get a full growler, we're, yeah. we're moving through it. You want it. the keg? We'll, we'll just undo the keg, send it your way. It even smells weird. It does. It's, um... So this is a chi- no 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 no. Before no? you announce it, I, try it I, I want I want to try it. Okay, okay. So we'll try said mystery beer. No, I'm in. I like it. It tastes so. It's a chili chili cider. Yeah, as in chili pepper cider. Yeah. It tastes like somebody took really flat apple juice and. Tossed in cayenne pepper and stirred it and gave it to me. And what's wrong with that? Uh, a, it's not real beer. Let's start. Well, there. no, fair enough. It's not a beer. It's a cider. B, even though it's a cider, it's flat. Like the it bottle is, has it a is kind of flat. Ton of carbonation. Yeah. I was I was pointing this out before we started recording. On the bottom of the growler, you see all these carbonation bubbles at the bottom, uh, which. No, if you, move? no, I was popping it, and they see they pop up when you hit okay. it. Okay, okay. Um, so it is, and it's kind of flat. And you see a lot of carbonation in there. But it, you don't taste the carbonation. No, all you taste is apple juice with this weird hint of cayenne pepper. Yeah, but I like it. I would probably actually buy this and drink it at home. I would buy this and cook food with it. Like, I think it would make some good food. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, I actually, I don't even remember who made this now. Do you remember the brewery? Uh, yeah, that 
it's that brewery that made the chili beer, the chili cider them and it's these guys it's these guys it's these guys the guys that made this are the guys that made this those are the ones all right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think they had noses on their faces <laughs> there might have been some ears on the side there mm. sounds weird i know right um i will try to figure that out uh so that i can throw that on a, a lower third here you know if only we knew somebody to call and ask right who are you gonna call ghostbusters oh, i was gonna say the annies oh yeah i'll call the annies afterwards right. to find out what this is okay um yeah so so that's what we're drinking i was i was talking to you earlier i was like this kind of reminds me of uh the beer fest we went to last last summer yeah um in everett they have a for those of you that aren't local everett washington they have a uh, a beer fest they've been doing for a couple years now um and uh one of the beers that i tried this year was a it was a jalapeno triple uh tasted delicious didn't but it burned like right here the rest of the day you didn't you didn't try that one i think i did no like, i tried that one after you and jess left no, didn't that one that we i tried i didn't get the sample like i took a hit as we were leaving what did i take a drink out of I, all right i drank something out of your glass as we were leaving because i gave you my remainder tokens yeah but it wasn't that one i don't okay think. well that one was bad yeah, no, no, no. Whatever okay. that was, I, I do recall that being not great. But um, I feel like this is going to be the same thing because I can feel it like I can already feel this happening. Yeah, no, no. I, I feel a little bit in the lips, a little bit of the chili powder, but I'm going to keep drinking. No, no. I mean, so, um, I'm not going to not drink it. And obviously, uh, announcement. We got our audio-only podcast working now. We did. We got approved by iTunes and Stitcher. Yes, iTunes and Stitcher. Uh, and those are the big two, which means I can start um, uh, putting that feed around on some of the other sites. I know there's some um, some other apps other than those two, which you can get to listen to your podcast. We've had a request for one or two other ones. Um, so that'll all be up. And that means uh, now when I uh, uh, edit the video, I can rip the audio straight out of that and throw it into uh, our feed, which automatically pulls into iTunes, automatically pulls into Stitcher. Um, Episode 11, which is last week's episode, is the only thing that's up right now. But now that we've been approved, I can go backfield the first 10 episodes. Sure. So you'll hear those great uh, first couple episodes. Oh, the audio quality was so good. Yeah. We thought it would be really awesome to use lav mics so you don't see these mics in front of us. Um, but we, we like to move around a lot, and it didn't work out so good. We but, do this all the time. Yeah, I don't know. I still And really, since we started using these mics, I haven't seen you do that a lot. I don't do it with button-up shirts, only t-shirts. Okay. That's a, uh, a viewer pointed that out to me. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so yeah, if, if you don't uh, have time or patience to sit down and watch the video, if you only want to hear the audio. Come on. You're going to miss out on that face. Um, you'll be able to uh, go check it out on iTunes and Stitcher and wherever else. And I'll post a thing up uh, on, on Facebook probably tomorrow when I get this video up sure. saying, check it out. Now, which means brother. you can save your viewing time for television, which is what I've been doing. Ooh, what? This is a smooth segue. Yeah. Oh, Until I just pointed out that it was a smooth segue. All right. So you've uh, been watching some TV. What have you I've been, been watching? watching? So I watched the newest Constantine, and Jess and I have been binge watching on cooking shows because she has never seen them and it blows my mind right but, like uh, but i guess i i have a an interesting cooking myself so i would not naturally be drawn to that right and so you showed her yan can't cook showed her <laughs> no 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 oh come on it's all online it's fantastic no no we did uh so my old roommate and i loved kitchen nightmares like okay. something fierce and he sent me a text that just went he finally did it. He up and left. Like, he didn't even try to finish out the restaurant. He's like, nope. And Gordon Ramsay peaced out. Okay. So, Jess was doing the dishes. And I'm like, hey, I, do you mind if I watch this while you're doing the dishes? And she was super intrigued by it. So, we watched a couple of Kitchen Nightmares. Watched some MasterChef. Watched some Hell's Kitchen. And just watched all. So, we've been binging on these shows. Okay. The problem with these shows for me is I have a culinary background. Right. Right. I have degrees and restaurants and clades and. And you got so good that you're now hosting a pop culture podcast. Uh, wait a minute. As I recall, I've been featured in Wine and Food Spectator twice. <laughs> I have a James Beard Award. Thank you. Okay. okay. I'm a little insulted by that. Uh, well, 
Anyways, the problem with it is now all I want to do is freaking cook. Right. Like, really cook. Like, the way I used to cook. Yeah, yeah. The problem is, I don't have... Well, yeah, A, my wife is allergic to everything. <laughs> like, I love you, honey, but gluten, dairy, eggs, nuts, soy, yeast, vinegar, mushrooms, like, anything that produces yeast. Like, but it's nice that you're not bitter about that at all. I'm actually not. The only thing I miss is making Alfredo sauce. It's to make Alfredo from scratch. Okay. Like, I think when her and I first got married... I actually made a lasagna and just gave it to my neighbor downstairs. <laughs> You're like, I, just, I, I, I need to make I, I got an itch. I just need to make some lasagna. I want to make a lasagna and I'm giving it well, to the I mean, guys if, downstairs. Well, I mean, if you ever get that itch, just give me a call. I'd be happy yeah, to. I will, I will totally make you a lasagna. Cool. But I used to, like, you know, do all these culinary works. And then I was telling her, I'm like, oh, well, I could do that for you because we're watching the show. I'm like, but instead, you know, I'll substitute this and I'll do that. And she's getting excited. I'm like, but there's a couple things we don't have that we would need because everything was in my kitchen. Well, the, you know, the, the kitchen, the yeah, kitchen. Yeah. but now at home, we don't have all these things. Right. So I'm like, well, you know, I would need a couple things, you know, probably only cost about $150, $200 to buy what we need, but I could really up the level of food I'm making. And then she sees the disaster in the kitchen when it's done. Oh yeah. Because if you, when you watch those shows, it's like, there's the food processor that you use for one thing, the kitchen aid, the immersion blender, the, this, the whipped mousse, the three different pans, the saute and then the sear, like just all these crazy things. And she's like. Because our agreement is, I do all the cooking, she does all the cleaning. <laughs> and she was just like, you know, honey, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm okay with what you make right, now. Yeah. R- risotto's fantastic. Well, okay, I guess, she, no, she can't even... Well, she still gets like, you know, I still make sauces from scratch. I still make everything, you know. It's very... We, we eat very clean now. Right. But still, it's now that, now that itch and watching all these shows, I'm like, uh, you know... I know KitchenAid's only like 350 bucks, but that's it's totally worth it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah. I'm totally going to buy one of those. Like. If I had a kitchen, I would totally buy a KitchenAid. But I have a stove and a single cabinet, essentially. Yeah, well, I mean, your kitchen's about the size of this table. Yeah, no, that's not a joke. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, yay, studio apartment. Uh, so, yeah, so we've been binge-watching a lot of that, a lot of Gordon Ramsay. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's been a lot of fun for me at least. And it's been fun for her cause it's, it's exciting. Like who doesn't love watching Gordon Ramsay yell at people? Right. And the best part is I watched the whole seat. I've been on season one of junior master chef. Okay. So it's kids nine through 12 years old. And these kids are like amazing. Like right. th- what they're preparing is phenomenal. Like I couldn't prepare half of that shit. Like at my age now, the other half I couldn't definitely not make when I was nine years old. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it's nice watching, like, Gordon and the guys, like, nice because they're all these little kids, right, right. right? So they're not yelling. They're not cursing. They're really encouraging. They hug them, tell them not to cry when they get thrown off the show until the episode where it's kitchen takeover. Okay. Where they have to go into a kitchen and do a, a lunch service. Well, usually it's a dinner service for the adults, but kids. Lunch, right. Yeah. They can't stay up that late. Right. <laughs> so Gordon's our expediter. And it's like... You can see at first he's kind of encouraging. He's like, "Okay, you wanna you wanna put those the plates on a little bit sooner, and you wanna watch your presentation." And by the end of it, he's like, oh, "How about a yes, chef?" How he throws the plate back. I'm like, "Yes!" <laughs> like he couldn't help himself. He tried so hard and just no, couldn't do it. Nice, <laughs> loved it. So, uh, where are you watching that at? Is that the Hulu, or is that? I am watching on the Hulus. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And uh, Netflix. Netflix has all of Hell's Kitchen. Okay. Hulu has all of MasterChef. And Hulu Plus has all of MasterChef. Hulu Web Only has Junior MasterChef Season 1. Hulu Plus has Season 2. Okay. Um, So, funny thing that I'm asking you where all that stuff is. Because uh, this new service launched today. I don't know if you saw this. Um, so all of the, the movie studios and the TV studios kind of got tired of everybody just defaulting to torrenting everything. I don't see the problem yet, but go yeah, on. Well, I don't know. Yeah, no, uh, so they, they all got together and designed the site and launched it today. I think it's technically still in beta called Where to Watch. So it's a search engine. You go in there and you say, I want to watch this movie or this show. And it'll list all the major sites and say, oh, you can find it on here and it would cost you this much, or you won't find it on here, it would cost you this much. So, like, I say if it's on Netflix, they say it costs you whatever the subscription right. model you want is. Uh, if you want to buy it from iTunes, it's X amount and things like that. See, although that's cool, don't you just default to Amazon 
instant watch and just pay to watch it because like not all those are going to be free you know what i mean no 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 so, but it, 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 you can definitely see where it would be cheaper to buy or watch it or whatever no so um i mean obviously being somebody that has a netflix subscription if anything shows up and it's like netflix i'm like well that's obviously what i'm doing because i'm already it's already right pre-paid. you're already yeah uh, but like goodwill hunting my favorite movie of all time got taken off of instant watch a couple months ago <gasps> right uh, so I searched it today and saw Excuse me, I believe the chili bear is about to make me sneeze. Nope, you're good. Uh, I searched that today as a test and it's like 12 bucks to watch it everywhere. No, like you even to, on the Voodoo? Cause, yeah, because you have to buy it. it. Voodoo didn't show up as having it. Voodoo has like everything. Right, but that wasn't one of the things that showed up. Um, so it showed, like I said, iTunes. Um, you can buy it through ans- uh, Amazon Instant Video. You can buy it through... There's like two or three other things where you could buy it from, but nobody had it for rent. I was like, that's really weird. Now I'm really curious if Voodoo does. Now the reason I mentioned Voodoo specifically and what you just said actually sparked something in my head because I've been noticing I'm getting a lot of emails from places like Voodoo, Amazon Instant, and Google Movies. I don't use their services. I got no desire to. I got right. Hulu. I got DVD from Netflix and Netflix, and I have a torrent. Right. Worst case scenario. But Google just, like, hey, come check out our Google movies. Here's a free Interstellar. You now own it. Right. Not Interstellar. I'm sorry. A Gravity. Yeah. yeah. Voodoo's like, hey, here's a $10 credit for rental movies. Come check out our service. Everyone's like, hey, come yeah. come check us out. Get to know us a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I wonder if that's that's I, part of the I reason. Think I think it's a big push between uh, all of these companies now that they're trying to figure out how to combat people just defaulting to piracy. Hmm. So maybe not make your Blu-rays twenty-four dollars when they come out. Blu-ray. Who uses Blu-ray? I, I do. I love Blu-ray. Okay. Look, I about to get derailed again. I'm very specific that's in, what we do. in how I do it. You know what I mean? If it's a movie and I order the disc from Netflix, I watch it, and I'm like, ooh, I want to watch it again. I notice I'm going to watch it more than twice. I will go buy it because I feel like they deserve money. It's a product I'm enjoying that much. Same thing with torrents. If I torrent something and I watch it and I go, hmm, that was meh, I never want to see that again, then I never, I don't buy it. If I torrent it and I want to watch it a second time, I make sure to go buy it because I feel like it's, it's deserving of the money. They did a quality video. I'll pay for it. So this may come to a sh- as a shock to you and, and the viewers. Please sit down before he says this. I don't buy physical media. <gasps> like, yeah, I'll get my, I have my DVD subscription to Netflix, but yep. the majority of the stuff, if I can't stream it, I don't watch it. And it goes in line with, you know, my, my comic thing now is I don't want to have a huge physical collection of things. There's something, of, like, when you put that Blu-ray in, with a 7.1 surround sound, 60 inch, 1080 ITV, the Blu-ray, like it is awesome. You don't get that from no, streaming. This this goes back to the the discussion you and I have had. You have more space. Yes. I don't have a 60 inch TV. I don't have a 7.1 surround sound system. I have a 32 inch TV, and I use the internal speakers. Do, do you want to come watch a movie sometime? Sure. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Yeah. You know we. We'll, Bring some beer. I'll make popcorn. We'll watch a movie. No lasagna? Yeah, I'll make lasagna okay. if you want. Yeah. 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 Oh, man. Oh, movie night. Thing. Right? Um, yeah, so that's it's kind of a thing. If, for those of you out there watching, listening, so if, what's you, want, site if again? you want to go check out, it's it's uh, wheretowatch.com. Okay. Um, super uh, basic layout of the site, too. It's literally like a search bar. You type it in, and it gives you your results. It's, it's fantastic. Awesome. Um, and so, uh, for you, any TV for you? So, um, TV-wise, um, I've watched most of our normal shows. Okay. Uh, you and I were talking earlier. I'm, I am two episodes behind on Constantine. Uh, one of the, the struggles of, of watching shows with the girlfriend is both of our schedules have to line up in order to watch our shows. Sure. So, like, last Friday, we sat down and we, we caught up on a bunch of stuff. Uh, so, we caught up on Big Bang Theory and uh, Arrow and a couple other shows. I don't know. Um, so I'm behind on Constantine. I'm, I haven't watched this week's um, Gotham or Flash. Other than that, I'm, I'm caught up on everything. So 
tell me about Arrow. I was speaking to somebody about it earlier today, and he had a take on what's going on with Arrow. I'd like to hear your take on how you feel about Arrow Season 3. Um, I, I think so far, we're only, I want to say three, maybe four episodes in. So, it, so far, it's, it's essentially taking off uh, some of what we saw in the last season and setting up the groundwork for kind of a shift in a couple of the characters. Okay. Um, there was a character that died in, I think, the first episode of this season. Um, so now somebody else is kind of moving in to take their position, sort of. And it's something that I've, I've been seeing coming for a while, and now it's, just, it's finally happening. Um, there's a lot more interaction between Ollie and his sister now. Okay. Um, the it, ill-named Speedy. Yes. Okay. Um, which we saw more interaction with them in the first season and the second season, not so much. And now they're, they're, you can tell they're bringing her in to be a main character again. Okay. Um, so a lot, of it, a lot of the first couple of episodes have really been set up for what they're going to do with the rest of the season. So and I'd like you to confirm this. He was saying that he's liking where this is going because he feels like they're going to get rid of a lot of cast members that are just frivolous cast members that don't need to be there anymore. Would you agree to that? Because the reason I didn't like Arrow is that it, the cast was getting too big. It, so if they're going to call it back down, I may swing back around for season three. I think there's there's one or two cast members that they've they've really built up in season two. Okay. That you can see they're trying to kind of back off a little bit. Okay. Um, some things are happening in their personal life, which is kind of pulling them away from the team, which is fine. If there's characters that you know, I don't need to see this guy every episode. Have him be there every third or fourth episode. It's fine. Uh, I think that's one of the issues you get when you get a big cast. And, yeah, and no, Smallville agree. suffered from that, too. You had, they you feel had, like they had to put everybody right. at all times. You, you had Clark, and you had Lois, and you had Chloe, and you had, um, you know, Ollie showed up in there for a while, and you had all these all these secondary and tertiary characters they were trying to cram into every episode. Lana, um, you can't have everybody in every episode. No. No. And I think that's one thing that they maybe was the downfall in season two is they were trying to say, here's this huge cast that we're going to follow their entire adventure every every episode. Well, now all of them are going to be together all the time. And that was my so, primary argument. So for have secondary two. and tertiary okay. storylines that you touch on here and there. And that's the way I think it should be. You have a main cast, you have a B cast, almost a C cast, and just every now and then rotate it around. Right. Yep. Cool. Yep. So. And. I caught episode three of Constantine, which you're not caught up on. I'm not caught up on yet. Uh, I didn't like it as much as I liked episodes one and two. I don't think it's going to be a show where every episode blows my mind, though. No. I still enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to what's going to happen next. The effects are awesome. They brought in some of the characters we see in the comic books, uh, one of the main villains in, which was pretty cool. Like I looked, looked forward to that. The premise of the episode was actually really, like, it was original. It was creative, and I enjoyed it. So I like where it's going. Essentially, the premise, you know, I'm going to spoil it for you. No, yeah, go ahead. Was there was an old blues, an old blues singer who sold his soul to the devil to become this popular singer. In his last recording on the vinyl disc, you hear the devil coming back for his soul. Okay. So that recording essentially is the embodiment, not the embodiment, but a personification of the devil himself. Okay. So listening to this vinyl just makes you crazy. Like you kill, you murder, and you want to just keep spreading that carnage around. So eventually it gets found out. It's been discovered. It gets in the hands of people, and Constantine now has to go figure it out and stop it. Okay. Original enough. The effects on it were really well done. Like when you see how the original blues musician, you know, how the devil came for his soul, what happened with the vinyl at the end, all the effects around it. We're stunning. Okay. Like, they are putting money into the show, and I feel like it's paying out. So, maybe there was enough interest. Obviously, you know, the pilot, they didn't... It was hit or miss whether it was going to take yep. off. And after the viewing at San Diego, maybe there's enough interest where they're like, all right, let's, let's do the second episode. And now they're really in the group where, like, people are loving this show. Let's throw money at it to make them stay. No. No? No. Because... These are already been in the can. These are, have been recorded before Sandy, like before the pilot aired. So they wouldn't even know how but well they, it would have done. But they could have gone. What I'm saying is they could have gone back and added in more better effects. I don't think so. No. Like as you watch it, I am very much pretty sure that that's how they filmed it. Because I remember reading an article before. Well, no, these these couldn't have been in the can since before Sandy. No, no, since before the pilot. 
Well, yeah, but I'm saying uh, the fan reaction to the airing at San Diego, they could have. That, that's possible. Because obviously they, they changed stuff. These the second, and third, sure. second and third episode were done after San Diego because they, they changed the first episode after yeah. San Diego. And I know that that was the big argument with Constantine and the articles. If you read what was going on, NBC was on the fence because it was so expensive to make. Right. Speaking of expensive to make, Mad Max, the new movie that's coming out. Mm-hmm. I was not aware of this, so don't quote me on my numbers. But apparently, they finished production on Mad Max. They took it to the production company. They saw it. They liked it so much, they said, what can you do with another $20 million? Really? Like, seriously. Huh. So now I am so excited to see that. <laughs> like, to the fact that the production company is all like, hmm, here's another huge check. Go right. continue this train of amazing. All right. So... That's my only movie news. I suck. But you have movie news. I do. But before I get to movies, I do want to talk about one more show real yeah, quick. Yeah. What do you got? Sons of Anarchy. And I know this is not a show you watch. It is not a show I watch. It is a show I'd like to binge on when it's over, though. You absolutely should. It's in the final season right now. Yes, it is. Um, and these are – it's an uh, FX show, which means it's only 13 episodes a season. So it'll be super easy to catch up on. But being that it's the final episode, they're going balls to the wall, something crazy every episode. Um, this – this last episode, uh, like every minute, around, I'm like, oh, oh, oh God, what's going to happen now? Oh, God, what's going to happen now? They're also killing off a lot of people. That's in the last what I season. heard. I heard. And in this, this last season, or this last episode, they killed off somebody who has been there since the very beginning of the show. Oh, really? Um, and it was one of those things where uh, he had gotten taken hostage the previous episode. By the Yakuza? Uh, no, 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 no. By... This is not to sound racist. This is how they refer to people in the show. Oh, no, so, Jay. So pretty much everybody in the Sons of Anarchy is white. Yeah. Okay. So uh, when they are making deals with these other groups of people, they it, they always refer to them by color and not by race but by color. So when they're dealing with some of the African-American gangs, they just say, oh, we're good with black. When they're dealing with the Chinese, oh, yellow. When they're dealing with the Mexican gangs, it's brown. Okay. So it's yellow, brown, black. That's just how they refer to them. So this guy was actually taken hostage by black. Oh. Um, and there's some stuff going on that you had to have watched from the beginning of the season, actually last season also, to kind of understand. But there's some, some stuff going on with, with guns, because that's one of their big businesses, is they, sure. they run guns for people. Um, so they, they last episode, they... Uh, captured this guy and they've been torturing him trying to get uh, the, the Sons of Anarchy to, to meet their demands they took out his eye Ooh. at one point and delivered it to the son saying you gotta take us seriously or you know every day we're gonna take another body part off of him so they took out his eye and then at one point they cut off uh, uh, one of the fingers on his left hand and one of the rules with the sons is if you can't ride your bike, you can't be part of the club. I mean, you're out. So they, they took fingers off of his clutch hand so he can't ride his bike. So so they don't care what happens to him now. He's well, they, no, they do because he still he was one of the original members of the, the club. But he's not a son anymore. Well, they still want to get him back, though. Okay. Um, but in this last episode, there's some stuff that goes down between the two groups. They're, they look like they're going to make a deal. And at the last minute, the, the guy that's in charge of black pulls out a gun and, and kills this guy. And you don't really see it coming. Hmm. So it happens, and you're just like, shit, that just happened. Well, now it's on. Yeah. So, um, and they say that every episode is going to get progressively more crazy. Um, this was episode, I want to say, six or seven. So we're. Yeah, because I think there's only like five left, right? Yeah, yeah. So maybe this was even eight. It might have been episode eight. So yeah, there's only like five episodes left. Ah, uh, I'm so, so it is going to be just nuts. So in the next couple of weeks, you're going to hear me go more and more crazy over this show. Well, you've been talking about it for years now. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I love this show. And it was one of those things where I didn't start watching until the beginning of season four. And then I, I just binge watched the first three uh, seasons in like two weeks. And they're both on Hulu and Netflix. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So it's crazy. So that was, that was the other show I watched, um, which... I got a couple guys I, I, I work with that are super into it, too. And f- randomly, I got uh, a thing in the mail from Harley last week. Because they all ride Harleys in the show. And I got a thing from Harley, and it's, uh, it's a sticker. It's a Harley sticker that's Sons of Anarchy themed. 
Is that what I, I have something from Harley at the house? I haven't bothered to look That's at. That's probably what it is. It's oh, like okay. the yellow envelope or something yeah, like that. Because remember, you no black I, envelope. You yeah. and I signed up for the Harley uh, when the, not the V-Rod. What bike was it we were looking at? I was looking just a Sportster. I what was know. the one you and I were looking Oh, the, no, no, no. We were looking at the, uh, the street. They're, they're sportier. Yeah. They're sportier bike. Uh. The 500 and the 750. Um, but yeah, so I got this and I'm like, that's, that's weird. Cause obviously I, I want a Harley I have for a while and I love this show. So it's just super random that I get this sticker. It's maybe but it's time to pull the trigger. May, well, I don't, I don't think November is the right time to the, buy a bike. The, the, I beg to differ. No, no. It'd be a great time for the price, for the price but I would get no riding time ah, out of if it. If only there was some place you could store it. Huh, we'll talk about it later. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, anyway, so that was my last show that I wanted to talk about. So let's go into movies. Movies. So you didn't really... Did you watch any movies this week? Yes, no, maybe? No, I've been so busy trying to catch up on work after being gone for a little while and then having house guests and everything else. I did not get a chance to watch movies. Okay. I did finally watch two movies that have been sitting at my house for a month now. Um, I went through this thing a while ago where I just went through Netflix and... Every comic book related movie I added to my queue. <laughs> Did you guys get Road to Perdition, History of Violence? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um, I even got uh, Condor with Alec Baldwin. Wow. Oh, God. Uh, the Phantom. Like all Billy those, Zane version? Yeah. <sighs> like all those really crappy 90s How dare comic you? Movies. I remember thinking that movie was awesome when I first saw it. I go watch it now. I haven't watched it since. Exactly. Um, so, two that were at my house. My apartment, rather. Uh, Catwoman, the Halle Berry, <laughs> yeah. which I I got halfway through it, and I had to be like, I need to do something else for a you bit. Can't, you can't, no. So I stopped it for like two hours, and some other stuff came back, watched the last half. So, so horrible. Uh, and that's li- like, literally, I don't know anything else to say other than horrible. It was like numb. I, I remember I watched it, but I don't, re- my mind won't let myself remember it. Yeah. Um, and this was supposed to be based off of the DC Catwoman, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, because I mean, yeah, she, there was a the whole thing with cat, but a cat breathed its soul into her, and that's how she got her powers. That that sounds right. Yeah, like every time my cats come to nuzzle me before night, I'm like, <gasps> are you are Nothing. you the, are you the crazy Egyptian Nothing. cat? Uh, she had a whip, so that part was there. The costume was totally different. The name was totally different. Um, and she had very feline movements, which, yeah. yeah, I know Catwoman's agile or whatever, but she was like running up walls like a cat. Oh yeah, like it was. It was horrible, and she did pull out the the Eartha kit, perfect. So that I, I was like, oh, that's a callback. It's terribly placed, but so I suffered through that. I'm sorry. The other thing I watched, um, which I've been putting off for four years, I rewatched the Green Lantern. Movie. Yeah, you did. Uh, and this I'll is talk to you about this. This is a movie that I went and I saw it in the theater opening day. Good for you. And I had such high expectations for it. Yeah. Like I feel like a lot of people did because there's a lot of really good comic movies yeah. coming out at the time. And this was just not that. Mm. Um, I walked out of the movie theater that day and I'm like, what the fuck did I just spend two hours doing? Um, the, from the c- terrible CGI suits to. Okay. The ridiculous Hector Hammond. Okay, the Hector Hammond was bad. Even Kilowog. I was like, that is not, that's not, that's not a Kilowog. So, here's the thing I have, my argument with the CG suits. I was on board for them. And I'm still on board for them. I'll tell you why I'm on board for them. What is Green Lantern suit made up of? It's made up of the energy. It's a construct, right? Right. So, why do all of his other constructs just look shadowy and green, but his clothes are pristine clothes? Because his uniform is not a intentional construct. It has to be. No construct can survive without your without you thinking about it. Remember. So that's my point. But, if you think but, if you think of his suit as a construct, those suits that he had made perfect sense. But I feel like I feel like the suits are a subconscious construct. Because every time, every time you see a new Green Lantern put on a ring, as soon as the ring goes on, before they even understand they it, a suit, there's yeah. a suit. Understood. So they're not willfully being, I need to have this Green Lantern costume. But they can change them at they, will. They can once they learn how, yes. So that's my point. If it is a construct, 
and that's what it is. Canon, the suits are constructs. Ergo, the suits in the Green Lantern movies made sense if they're constructs. But think about the mask, right? What so about it? He's got the mask on. He's like, what's with the mask? And it's explained to him that it will automatically appear anytime the ring believes that you need to shield your identity. Okay, that part may not be accurate. Sure. Which I would say that then goes with the rest of the suit. It has to have some way to say that you're a Green Lantern, not just a regular And that's fine. Being. But still a construct. No matter what conscience level, it's still a construct. Therefore, if it's a construct made up of energy, the suits in the Green Lantern movie fit a construct made up of energy. I still think they're shitty. Well, I, don't, I didn't say they were good. I'm okay. just saying it made sense. Whatever. So I watched the movie again, and I think since I had such low expectations going into it this second time, uh, I didn't think it was as bad as the first time. I knew what to expect. Um, and I think that since I went into it not having an expectation of it being great, I enjoyed it more. Okay. Because I was like, I know what this is going to be. <laughs> It's the same as the Ghost Rider movie. If you watch the oh. Ghost Rider movie and just go, this is going to be two hours of stupid, then you're like, this with, is... With ten minutes of Eva Mendes. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just had a kid. Really? Uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan Gosling and her. I didn't know they were together. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. It's pop culture. By the way, it was, it was kind of funny watching Green Lantern because it's Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively who are now married. They are now married. Have a kid. Have a kid. God, it's like they're adults. Right. Uh, but no, so, again... I didn't hate the Green Lantern movie. I didn't love it. I went in with an expectation out of 1 out of 10 of it being a 4. So I was surprised because for me it was about a 5 or 6. So, And I have the extended edition on Blu-ray. And I will tell you now, it does not add anything. Yeah, I was going to say, thing. what's... The extended edition in Daredevil makes it a completely different movie. Right. It's like 40 minutes of, of stuff that they cut out. Yeah. Like a whole, like second story arc involving coolio and matt murdoch as an attorney like <laughs> all that got cut out of the movie and then you watch the movie with that in there you're like oh shit this, this is a this lot better kind of makes sense now. and it makes yeah. so much more right. sense green lantern my argument as i mentioned to you and annie's and i will i'll stand true to this now holds up better after going and watching it now than batman begins does okay and i as i said i own batman Be- Despite what I said previously, I own Batman Begins. Can't even trust what you say Cause, anymore. Because that was not my purchase. Oh, that that's was, fair. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's, that's fine. Um, well, t- okay, to be fair, I paid for it, but it was not my decision to purchase it. That's how it works, right? That's Yeah. Yeah, trust me. That is definitely how it works. Um, I got forced into buying a second pair of pants. <laughs> like, I need two pairs of jeans. Why? <laughs> Um, so yeah, maybe if I went back and watched Batman Begins, I would be like, yeah, maybe this wasn't as great as I thought at the time. No, it does not hold up. Like, but but you had to look at what we were comparing it to. No, and I understand that, but I mean, like, it is surprising how much it does not hold up. Like, I didn't want to finish it. It does not hold up. All right. So, that's that's just my opinion on it. Fair enough. Uh, so those were the movies I watched, and the movies you didn't watch. So, I did not watch. But, that leads into... Cooking? More, more drinking? Okay. I don't even want to. I'm loving this. I don't know. How about instead of drinking, I talk about comic books? Yeah, no, go ahead. Okay, cool. So there's a couple rants I want to go on, so I'm going to keep my reviews pretty short. Uh, Spider vs. a rant I'd like to go on. I also, on my polls, have Nova, Nightcrawler, G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, which mm. is... No, it's the one that's still based off... It's still written by Larry Hama. Oh, okay. At issue 208. Okay. So if you don't know what it is, um, originally IDW would, did not publish G.I. Joe. It was published by Marvel, and they did issue 1 in 1982 up until issue 150. IDW bought the property... I'm sorry, the production rights to the property and have all their side stories, like where G.I. Joe's current and they're militaristic and bad. I don't mean bad as an evil, I mean like bad stories. But they also relaunched the original one. They got Larry Hama, who's written all other 150 issues, to start up and continue where he left off. So this is like still following the old school storylines. Okay. With If you look at the art, they still kind of honor the old school art inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's campy and it's silly, but it's it's a fun read. Okay. And 
It's also three ninety nine. It is also three ninety nine. It also has all those like stereotypes that they ha- held true to yes. in the eighties. Oh, it's all still in here. Do they reference grid? Oh, like sh- shipwreck still looks like a gay sailor that nobody admits is coming <laughs> out, and like the Indians are all super racist dialogue. Like they're like, you know, what? we're we're gonna do it anyways. <laughs> we're gonna stick to our guns. Uh, Godhead. That's, Earth that's two Green worlds Lantern end. Core. I'm sorry, Green Lantern's core Godhead. Worlds end. Futures end, and I'll be reviewing Witches and Superior Iron Man. Yeah, all right. Um, so I actually have a decent week this week. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, so I got Alex and Ada, Batgirl. Is it really called Batgirl? It is. I can't. It's fra- it is Frat Girl. It is Frat Girl. Um, Batman. Uh, I also got Green Lantern Corps from the Godhead. Uh, I got Batman Eternal, Evil Empire. Uh, what the hell else did I get? I got Witches, mm-hmm. and then I got uh, The Fade Out. So that's like eight whole books for me this week. That's huge. That is a big week. Yeah. You can like, take a half hour to read all that. Well, actually, it took me a half hour to read two issues. Oh, really? Yeah, I look at the art. Yeah, you, I, I tend to read the whole issue, and then I go back and I'm like, ooh. Yeah. So, yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, so before I go into my reviews... I have two big rants I want to go on. Okay. You have a rant you want to go on. I'm going to start my rant with Spider-Verse. I love Spider-Man. I love everything Dan Slott's done with Spider-Man, including making sure. Doc Do Ock you know Spider-Man. Spider-Man loves Mary Jane? Yeah. That was, that was a, a comic book a couple years ago. Sorry. So, And I love everything he's been doing. I love even making Doc Ock Spider-Man. It's all been really good. Okay. Edge of Spider-Verse comes out, and I'm all like, oh, okay. Here's a story arc. It's like six, eight issues. It was like eight issues. I'm like, so they're going to make an annual out of that? Oh, it's worse than that. Oh, it's so, so much worse than that. So I'm like, oh, okay. Edge of Spider-Verse. Cool. Eight issues. I like the premise. The premise is every Spider-Man, every incarnation of Spider-Man ever created in every universe all comes together to fight a villain. So you have, like, all these crazy Spider-Mans. Like, if you look at the cover, you're like, regular Spider-Man 29, Spider-Woman, Spider-Girl, Lizard Spider, Gwen Stacy Spider, Scarlet Spider, Iron Spider, Female, like, all, like, some that are, like, used as marketing tools, some that are, like, (laughs) all these crazy stuff. Like, Werewolf Spider-Man, even, like, every incarnation of Spider-Ham, like, it's all in there. And it's awesome. I've been really enjoying it, right? I'm going to pull out my phone just so I want to see your reaction. So eight issues of Edge of Spider Verse, and I'm like, oh, I'm totally in for that. Like, why, why not, right? And then I see Spider Verse number one. Now I'm all like, um, no, motherfuckers. <laughs> Edge of Spider Verse was only eight issues. This is supposed to be a limited series. What the deuce? Uh, so we have August, September, October, November, December's down here. Then we go into January. Whoa, whoa, what? We go into February, Wait. and we end at March. That is a total of, I believe, if I remember my count right, 26 issues for Spider-Verse. Are you shitting me? Is Jeff Johns in charge of this event? You would think, right? And I'm all like, I was in for Edge of Spider-Verse. Now I gotta go, and that's another, what, 18, 19 issues beyond that? I don't... I don't have the money for so this. I, I feel like Dan DiDio and Joe Casada are going out to coffee on Tuesdays and saying, how the, how can we fuck these people over more? Like, where can we get more money? Right. And you know how at the back of comic books they have the checklist, right? Right. Like for crossovers. Is this it's one like, a two-page checklist? No. Oh. So, I yeah, just that's, spi- that's not as many issues as so you just showed Edge me. of Spider-Reverse had the same thing up to here. I'm like, oh, that's all it is. That's all it is. No. This is this month's Spider-Verse releases. This is just this month. This month's. Hmm. Oh, and not all the tie-ins either. No, no, no. Yeah, this is just... Spider-Verse Team-Up is a separate book. How is that... Isn't the whole Spider-Verse a team-up? Like... Is this, this, is this like Power Man wanders through the neighborhood one day? He's like, yo, let me punch something. Really? And here's the problem. I'm 10 issues in. You can't stop now. I can't stop now. <laughs> nope. Goddamn completionist. I'm, I'm in. I'm not happy about And I take a small satisfaction, and I'm not buying Axis from Marvel. That has been 
so bad. I'm glad I'm not buying it. I know. I'm I'm kind of scared for my next issue of Magneto because I know it's like it's obvious, obviously a tie-in. But oh, you sons of bitches! Your rant. So uh, my rant. Um, yeah, I, frat girl. For whatever reason, <laughs> I decided to give frat girl. Uh, another issue. Um, uh, you may remember last last issue we bitched and moaned about um, her waking up hungover, not knowing if she slept with some guy. And that, not just some guy. Some guy she didn't recognize that her roommate had to remind her of who it was. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she's moved to the cool hip part of town now, the uh, the trendy uh, trendy part of town. And, um, so I, I did start to understand what she's doing for school. Cause I was like, why is she back in college? Isn't she like 26 or 27 now? She's 21. She, okay. 21, whatever. She's in grad school. Oh, so that sort of makes sense. Cause she's an intelligent person. She is an intelligent um, person. And she, uh, apparently she developed some algorithm that's groundbreaking and that's why she's in school. They're giving her money to develop her algorithm. So okay. that part I'm okay with now. Ish. What I'm not okay with, um, it opens up. Oh, even just looking at it bothers me. The art, I'm sure this art appeals to somebody. Uh, Fletcher's art. I am not that person. So he, I'm going to, do you know where he comes from? And that's going to make a lot of sense of that art. Didn't you say he was like a web artist? He's a web artist. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Which, hey, I'm not insulting web artists, but they definitely generally tend to have a very particular feel to it. Right. That is it. This is definitely right it. There. Um, so it opens up. They're clothes shopping. Her and Black Canary and I think her roommate. Yep, that's her. Are, roommate. Are clothes shopping, and it's it's all of this. Like they're talking like they're fifteen, and it drives me crazy. Uh, so I remember. I, I won't read this issue. I read the I first frat you. girl issue. There's so many word bubbles, but words I don't understand. Like it's it is another language. Yeah, no, they are definitely trying to appeal to the young. Uh, crowd right now and I'm just I don't like there are hashtags in their words uh -huh. they're referring to coffee like coffee drinks as things I don't understand and like right and I think I mentioned this at the end of last issue uh, Barbara gets a text that's like this cryptic text signed back girl I'm like okay now they're just ripping off pretty little liars with a <laughs> um, but yeah so the language in here I don't like the attitudes I don't like um so, she, like I said, she's in grad school, um, so she gets assigned a research assistant. She gets an office, she gets assigned a research assistant. Big red flag, her re research assistant is um, uh, some sort of Middle Eastern. And I'm like, isn't that kind of stereotypical? So, uh, uh, Nadima. Okay. Yeah, she's wearing the whole uh, headscarf and everything like that. And I'm like, this is dumb. Um, I literally, I, I haven't even finished this issue. It's I had to put the, it down. It's the argument of pandering for pandering's sake. Yeah. Got it. Um, it gets to the point where uh, there's a couple of experimental motorcycles stolen from a lab at the college. So that's the case she's on. She finds out that they're stolen, and then she leaves the lab. And uh, the police are at the lab taking crime reports, everything like that. She leaves the lab, walks, I don't know, 500 feet from the building. And, oh, shit, there's the villains on the motorcycles tearing up the front lawn right there. It's like you can see see the building is so close yeah, in the background. I'm, I'm sure it's one of these windows you can see. So I'm like, the police are really that inept that they can't look out the window and be like, oh, oh those are your motorcycles got stolen right there. Like, come on. I, I understand there's a suspension of disbelief in comics, but that's fucking ridiculous. And ran down, she ran them down by foot even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so these these two criminals, they're, they're in some sort of anime cosplay. And they're reciting something from a cosplay, and Batgirl's like, that sounds real familiar. And then later she realizes that it's from an anime she watched as a kid. So, obviously, oh, and eventually the, this stupid college security, hey, you on the motorcycle, stop, stop. Yeah. Um, so, she remembers why she recognizes the, the character. She goes into the local anime shop because every hipster neighborhood needs an anime shop. Some need too. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is called Robot Pony. And this is about where I stop because she goes in there and she asks the, the shopkeeper about um, the anime she recognizes uh, called... Oh, first of all, he's listening to some crazy K-pop, and he's like, "Don't you love this and new he album?" He has a rabbit. Yeah, he's head got on. a rabbit. He's like, "Don't you love Mo Mochu?" Which is some crazy K-pop band. And she's like, "I don't know who that is." And he's like, "Well, you suck." 
Uh, he's like, what rock have you been living under? And I hate hipsters that do that. The most obscure band. And they're like, don't you love this album? I'm like, I've never heard of these guys. Neutral Milk Hotel. They're like everywhere. They are, yeah. I don't know who that is, though. No, I don't either. But that's the new hot band. Yeah, okay. Um, so she's like, yeah, I was wondering if you could tell me about Achamana. And he's like, oh, no, I can't help you with that. But I can tell you about Science Battle Hero Nuclea, which is the original Japanese name before the Westerners destroyed it. Like, fuck you. Says, like, the clearly white dude. Right. I'm like, fuck you, you stupid hipster anime shop guy. And that's where I stopped reading. <laughs> so Jay was reading this in my office while I was reading Witches. I just loved hearing him fuming as he's turning the page. He's like, just like. <laughs> so I, I literally got s- maybe six pages in this issue. And I'm, I'm like, I'm done. And I am somebody who, even if I hate a comic, I will finish it. Just be like, yeah, that sucked. Maybe there's a redeeming factor in there somewhere. That's why I always finish it. This, I can't finish. I will probably finish it at some point. Maybe after I drink some more of this beer. But this is this is shit. I, uh, if I finish this issue and I'm still like, this is fucking garbage, drop in the book. 36 issues in and I'll drop it. I tried as hard as I could last week to talk to you about why you should not drop Green Lantern. You cannot justify me not dropping this. I, I don't. I wanted you to drop it after thirty-five. So yeah, let that one ride out. And buddy. here's my. I'm like, it's a it's a new writer, new artist. I'll give them two or three issues, see if they get their groove. Right, get their sea legs going. No, okay. they got nothing. It's my rant. Superior Iron Man. Is it? Is, is it, it superior? Really? Yeah. So I believe what is it. it. What is it superior to? Because I can guarantee you, it's not superior to the other Iron Man that we were reading. To Kieran Gillen? Yeah. I don't know. It's Tom Taylor who writes Injustice. He's the guy that hosted Tool Time, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tom the Tool Man Taylor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just he's the dialogue bubbles all just, uh, uh, and then everyone laughs. My suit, my suit needs more power. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, he does make a suit with more power. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I, um, it's I should just write these comics. It's he wrote. Uh, he's he just left uh, Earth Two for this book. He's writing Injustice Gods Among Us, which has been phenomenal. I've heard season two is not as good as season one, though. I still think it's pretty good. Okay, like it's not as good, but it's still pretty solid. So Tom Taylor has a reputation for taking things that you know and writing them in a different light. Halogen? CFL? I think this is an LEE because I'm still incandescent okay. light myself. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. I go by, like, Lantern. Do you? It's, it's got a green tinge to it. How do you drive home with that? Like <laughs> I mount it on the bumper. Um, <laughs> Just like a splash lamp. Yeah, no, I'm bus. actually – I drive a Model T still, you know, crank it in the front to start it. Mm-hmm. It goes like eight miles an hour. I'm going to leave after you just to be safe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, the title of Superior Iron Man is actually called Superior Spider-Man. Right. So we already know coming into this, Tony's not a good person. This, I didn't realize this was coming out because the other Iron Man book ended but didn't actually end. Like the issue was done. They kind of wrapped up their story, but there was no... There was no thanks for reading. Not even no thanks for reading. I'm like, well, what's going on with Arno? And he was kind of in the middle of a storyline with that one girl who had the Mandarin ring. Like, all this other stuff. I'm like, okay. Maybe it's just on hold till Access is over. They're like, nope, that shit is done. I'm like, okay. Just like Kieran, like maybe Kieran Gillen had an argument. Maybe they didn't get done by the time Access came out. Like, I don't know what happened, but they're just like, done. So, here comes Spirit and Iron Man. It takes place after Axis. Whoa, whoa, whoa. After Axis? So, After the event that's still currently going on. So, allow me to explain. Okay. Axis is the... I'm trying to think how to start this. <laughs> Many moons ago, there was an event called the AVX. Right. Where the Phoenix Five got the power of the Phoenix. It all went to Cyclops. He lost his shit. Killed Professor Xavier. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Rick Morender took over running Uncanny Avengers, which was after that, where it was half X Men, half Avengers, trying to work together after the whole Cyclops debacle in Uncanny Avengers. Red Skull takes Professor Xavier's brain and now has the powers of Professor Xavier as the Red Skull. Okay. He did that with the help of other mutants who kind of 
Okay. It's it was, shady business. It's, it was, a, it's a back alley deal. It was bad. I don't mean bad business. I mean it was bad writing. So comes Red, Red Skull Xavier comes Onslaught. Right. Which, the, for those of you that don't know what Onslaught was, it was his storyline in, in 95, sorry, 97 in the X-Men comics. Uh, the uh, Professor X tried to mind wipe Magneto, ended up getting all his bad juju in his brain, and then this big um, psionic being called Onslaught came in and just ran through the Marvel Universe. Essentially, it was the evil incarnation of Xavier and Magneto yeah, yeah. built together. Yeah, it was their, their hate child. It was their hate child. Anyway, so Red Skull makes a new Onslaught. And in th- and when that happens, it releases a psychic energy worldwide over but Genosha. Where all the good guys are still good guys, but not good guys. Okay. So, like, essentially, their answer for evil is, like, to the extreme. Like, it's okay to kill. It's right. okay to maim. It's okay. Like, they're all Punisher. Right. On the, Sounds perfect. On the flip side, all the villains want to do good, but are still villainous. Because you still have to have a balance. So, for an example, Carnage, he's still murderous. He's like, I want to kill this person. I want to eat him. I shouldn't do that, though. That's not, that's not right. It's not right at all. And then he sees this girl. This girl gets slapped by a guy. He's like, oh! <gasps> Villain, so he goes up and beats him and kills him and just like destroys him because he's carnage, you know. Right. So he's like just murdering this person, and the girl's freaking out. Turns out it, she's a hooker, and that was his pimp. So he's like, Hooker, that's bad too. So he just, just <laughs> murders her. <laughs> and then he looks in the mirror and he's like, Murder her, and just annihilates himself, right? So I'm like, Okay, that's that's kind of like all the villain stuff in Axis has been kind of fun, okay. all the heroes has been real bad. So we also had the launch of the new Captain America. Right. So what happens is in Axis, they, at this point, we're halfway through. They defeated Onslaught with the assistance of the villains because they're now trying to do good also. The X-Men are like, hey, that's Charles Xavier. He's our, it's his brain. We want him to try to bring him back. The Avengers are like, that's the Red Skull, and he killed all these people. No, you don't get it. Evan, who is Baby Apocalypse... Oh, right, 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 yeah. Becomes Apocalypse due to the Axis. Well, we knew that was going to happen at some point. Sure, so he becomes the Apocalypse, and he tells Cyclops, trust me, there's no Charles Xavier left. Let him have it. So the X-Men are like, okay. Yeah, we'll trust Apocalypse. Why not? So, well, no, the X-Men are now one unit again, rallying around Apocalypse. Oh, God. Well, think about it. They're now extreme evil. right. Well, not evil, but Apocalypse was never evil. He was just an extremist, you know? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the superheroes go back and they're like, oh, gosh, what should we do now that we have him? Well, we can't let the evil go again. Hmm. Let's kill him. They're like, oh, yeah, totally. Let's kill him. Why didn't, why didn't we think about this before? So Jarvis is like, are, are you crazy? Do you hear yourselves? <laughs> and Jarvis is like, no, I, I won't allow it. And they're like. Well, you're helping the villain? He's like, I, I want to love it. Well, that makes you a bad guy, too. And they beat Jarvis almost to death and throw him aside. Because he was... Jarvis up. is a person now? Yeah, remember the butler in Avengers? Oh. Jarvis is always... I'm just so used to, the, I guess, the, the movies. movies where he's just the, the voice. No, Jarvis has always yeah, been yeah, a yeah, person. He's I only forgot. a voice in, the, in yeah. the movies. So they throw him aside, and they go to find Onslaught, and surprisingly, he's not there. That's where we are at with Axis. This whole time, Iron Man's kind of been gone. Like, nobody quite knows what's going on with him. And now we get Superior Iron Man, where he's drinking again. He's whoring around again. And he's released extremists throughout the entire San Francisco area through a mobile phone app. So, essentially, he's the best Tony we could hope for. Like, the superior that's, Tony. That's, that's the guy I would want to be BFFs with. Well, you got to remember, superior Spider-Man was, was a Ock. hero. He was Doc Ock. He was a hero. Right. But also not really. Yeah, like, yeah. he killed Massacre, so Massacre wouldn't kill him. Like, it was treading that line. He did not tread the line. He just went for it. So, he released Extremis to all of San Francisco through a mobile app. So... They're all, like, beautiful, and they have, like, abilities, and they're strong, and they're intelligent. And he decides to monetize it, 
he gives it to them for a little bit and takes it away from them. So they all go back to normal. They get a thing on their phone saying, extremist trial app done, $99 a day to continue. So the, the first taste is free. Yeah. Yeah. And the rest you got to pay for. So he's drinking and Pepper's trying to explain to him how horrible it is. And he's like, no, nah, no, nah, man, I'm, I'm an opportunistic. I can't believe I waste all that time not drinking. Like I'm making, I'm making money, you know, make hay while the hay shines. And then you see he has this new slick looking armor. Right. So what you do find out with this super new fancy armor is it's actually made out of the symbiote. Oh. So it is symbiote armor. So it works physic like psychically attached to him only with the ability of extremists built into it. Okay. So like if you want to talk superior, that's that's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You want to talk more power in your costume, there it is. So as you see, they all start getting ugly. And like, you know, she was beautiful before and she got back and overweight, he's scrawny again, because the extremist app is over ninety nine dollars a day. Tony flies out. And at the end, Pepper's like, well, Tony was right. He always said his worst enemy would be himself, and I've prepared for this day. It's time we take action. And who do we see? Iron Man. So so this is Iron Man. It's like Mach 3 armor. It's Mach 2 armor. Okay. But it has the circle insignation of the bleeding edge armor. Okay. So I'm not sure of a couple things at this point. One who's in the armor? Right. So, we don't know. Is Tony acting this way because of what happened with Axis? And he's just not back to himself yet? Or is Tony finally himself? Because if we read here what's gone on before, the synopsis, while most were eventually restored, a more sinister Tony Stark evaded changing back. And he has some special plans for the world he swore to protect. A more sinister Tony Stark evaded changing back. We haven't seen that yet in Axis. Okay. We haven't seen most of them restored yet. So, spoiler alert, this takes place maybe after Axis, but Axis is still going on. Right. So, that's why I'm like, it takes place after... What's... Yeah. yeah maybe? Yeah, yeah. Why did he evade changing back? Like, I now have all these questions. Who's in the armor? Is it going to be Arno Stark that we saw in Kieran Gillen's run? His brother, who we know does become the Iron Man of 2015. That's next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it going to be Tony Stark? Because as we learned from uh, Tony Stark, director of S.H.I.E.L.D., he backed up his brain when he took over S.H.I.E.L.D. so that S.H.I.E.L.D. couldn't get all of his memories. Okay. But eventually they could be restored to him. Got it. So who's in the suit? I don't know, but I'm really looking forward to finding out. It's Franklin Richards. Oh my, I'd, I'd be fine with that too. Is that kid even around anymore? Oh yeah, he's still around. Okay. Oh yeah. You know they canceled Fantastic Four again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, as far as Spirit Iron Man goes, I like it. I like where it's going. I like the concept. I like that Tom Taylor always take characters that you know. It makes them batshit crazy and out of left field and always tends to surprise you. So, I'm looking forward to it. Okay. I really am. Good. 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 And yourself. Um, so I'm going to do my first actual review here. You're going to do your only review here, buddy. Look at that clock. Boom. It's a good call. Um, so I'll review Alex Nada. Uh-huh. Um, the other one I was going to review was uh, the Fade Out. but um, Which miniseries? Oh, I didn't even realize. Nine issues. Oh. I did not know that either. I didn't either. There were three issues in. So I mean, so so you're through. halfway through there. So um, Alex and Ada, this is number 10. Uh... If you remember from uh, my review of the last issue, issue nine, it ended with um, Ada is now sentient. She had ran away from home. She was trying to escape. Um, there were some, some police officers that caught her, found out she was a sentient android, uh, and she ran for it. She ends up on the doorstep of Alex's friends, um, almost out of energy, about to just shut down completely. Um, also, at the same time, we see a knock on Alex's door, and it's his ex-girlfriend. Woo. So this issue um, starts out with uh, uh, Ada. You see them bring her into the house. 
Um, she relays that I have no energy. They f- they give her a cup of simple syrup <laughs> because like this is two thousand calories. She they were gonna give her some food. She's like I don't have energy to chew. Obviously she had energy to talk, which is weird, but whatever. Uh, so they give her simple syrup. She, oh, sorry, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. A talking sentient robot who charges itself by food you're cool with, but the fact that she didn't have the energy to chew but could talk, that's what's like, mm, I call bullshit at that point. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's that's my line right there. Um, so they give her a cup of simple syrup. They're like, this is 2,000 calories. It'll get you up and good, whatever. So she drinks it, and then they realize, oh, shit, you're sentient. Because they didn't know. Alex oh. was the only one that knew. Oh. So they're like, uh... You ran away from home on your own. Your, your Alex doesn't know you're gone. Are you sentient? And she's like, "Oh shit, you caught me." Uh, jokes on me. Um, so she kind of explains that she became sentient. She was trying to get out of town, um, and which is a big no-no for these androids, right? Yeah, yeah. Sentient, okay. sentient androids are illegal because there was a couple that got sentient and they went batshit crazy and killed a bunch of people. So. Um, Stay tuned for more Superior Iron Man, where yeah. those sentients go batshit crazy and kill people. There you people. go. Um, so she kind of tells him, yeah, yeah, I'm sentient. I'm trying to get out of town. I got people on the West Coast. I just need to get there or whatever. Um, cut to Alex's house, where he's talking to his ex-girlfriend. Mm-hmm. And his ex-girlfriend's like, you know, I just miss you. And mm-hmm. maybe breaking up with you was a mistake. And, da, da, da. and Alex is kind of going for it. And then all of a sudden, he's like, wait a minute. How's your dating life been since we broke up? And she's like, well, it's it's been tough he's like oh, okay you're here because you're looking at me like a safety net you know what i love you so you're coming here because you want somebody that loves you that's the only reason you're here well no thank you ta-ta see you later have a good life good for him yeah um as he's saying that to her he also gets a call from his friend that uh, ada is at her house uh his house um so he's like hey claire i gotta get out of here i, ne- I got something else to do so he runs over there and uh Ada's like, I'm sorry, I was just trying to, you know, live my own life. And he's like, you know, we can go anywhere you want. I mean, even Alaska, if you want. She's like, is that where you want is me to be somewhere other than where you are? And he's like, no, I want you to be with me. And they kiss. They'd kissed once before. It was kind of weird. But this is them, like, realizing, like, you know, right, we don't want it to be weird. We want to be together, whatever. So they go back home. And then uh, as we knew it was going to happen at some point, they do the business. It only took 10 months. Yep. So um, so that happens, and there's a couple weird panels with that happening. And then they Did cuddle. they have a CPA for the business? I'm confused. What? No. What? No. So what kind of... Oh! oh. He meant sex. Uh, so the issue, like, you see them kind of, like, do their... Do the sex. Yeah, there it is. And then uh, there's some cuddling at the end, and there's some funny jokes between them. And then uh, they go to sleep, and it cuts to a news story about um, her encounter with the police. Um, so they're like, we, we, there's reports of a sentient android going around in Washington Park. Uh, you can see from this fan or from this uh, civilian footage what happened, whatever. It's super blurry. And then you see the last page is another guy watching the news story. I don't know who this guy is. Oh, snap. And he's like, Ada? So I can't tell. It kind of looks like the guy that Alex works with, but I'm not super sure because um, I don't have that any of those issues in front of me. So it's either the guy that Alex works with that recognizes um, the one guy that knows he has an Android. Or it could be somebody who's owned Ada previously. Maybe she wasn't a new Android. Do they have used models? I don't know. Oh. So... <laughs> I gotta be honest with you. When it comes to Alex and Ada, I have the trade waiting for me at home. Like, I think Barnes and Noble is delivering it today or tomorrow. Okay. And I'm all like, I think I'm gonna return it. Like, I really? want single issues. I just want to freaking read it now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually have to to buy issues six and seven again. I lent them to somebody who then went off the grid and ah, sons of bitches. I know. But did you ever get issues of Velvet back? No, but I'm, I'll get those eventually. All right, we'll talk about that off air. Well, that's it for us, guys. Episode 12 in the bucket. Episode 13 coming at you tomorrow. So the Dirty Dozen is done. Next to the Baker's Dozen's up next. That's right. 
Um, episode 13 will not be coming to you tomorrow. No, no, no. As Adrian did just I said, say, but next did I say week, tomorrow? You did. Oh, my goodness. Um, again, we are now going to have the audio on iTunes and Stitcher and maybe some other places in the next week. So when, I, uh, when we post the announcement that this video is up, we'll also um, put in that it's uh, you can find it here on iTunes or Stitcher or wherever. Sounds so, good. Until next week. Sorry, next I'm week. Jay. I'm Adrian. See you next time. Take care.